Yes, as uh, Eric has said, it's 75 years since the beginning of the civil war in Spain in 1936. And uh, the Spanish uh, Revolution is uh, in reality one of the most important revolutions of the 20th uh, century. From the, from the point of view of its uh, proletarian uh, content, it's probably at a higher level than the Russian uh, Revolution. When uh, Trotsky was making a balance sheet of the Spanish uh, Revolution, he said that uh, the Spanish workers, because of their courage and determination, could have taken power ten times. And the main tragedy of the Spanish Revolution is that the Spanish workers did not have a leadership capable of taking them uh, to power. And this is what we're going to try to explain in this uh, commission. The Spanish uh, Revolution, strictly speaking, goes from uh, April uh, 14th, 1931, the proclamation of the Republic, until the May days, 1937, which was really the point at which the revolutionary cycle was closed. Even though the actual civil war lasted for another two years until 1939. At the beginning of the 20th uh, century, Spain was a backward uh, country. The Spanish uh, ruling class had never been able to fully develop the country from a capitalist uh, point of view. It was an extremely parasitical uh, ruling class. There were there were still uh, semi-feudal conditions in the countryside in some parts of uh, Spain. And a, whole number, <clears throat> and a whole number of the tasks of the national democratic, the bourgeois revolution, had not been solved. On the one hand was the agrarian uh, question. The land reform had never been uh, properly implemented. And uh, hundreds of thousands of peasants lived, uh, particularly in the south of Spain, in conditions of almost uh, serfdom. There was also the question of the church, which played an important role in, Spani in the Spanish uh, Revolution. The church, as a matter of fact, was the main landowner in Spain and played an important role in uh, the ideological domination of the ruling class through the domination of uh, the education system and through the churches. This is what explains the fact that in every major revolutionary uprising of the Spanish uh, workers, one of the first things they did was to burn down the churches. The Spanish, so Spain had a massive uh, state uh, apparatus, completely uh, bureaucratic and uh, out of proportion with the needs of society. Particularly the army, which had an officer, uh, extremely reactionary and parasitical uh, officer uh, caste. There was also the, the national and colonial uh, questions that were not solved. Spain had lost uh, Cuba and the Philippines in uh, 1898, <coughs> creating a national mood of, uh, um, of decay and desperation and despondency. But it still, it still controlled a large part of uh, Morocco as a colony. And then there was also the national question, particularly in the Basque country and in Catalonia. Because of the weakness of the Spanish uh, ruling class, it had never been able to fully unite the country on progressive basis, the basis of the development of industry and the economy. So there, were, there had been a, a certain separate development of the Catalan and Basque uh, bourgeoisie, the two areas of the country where there had been more capitalist uh, development, more industrialization. And so there was a permanent conflict between the, these two uh, bourgeoisies and the Spanish uh, ruling class. However, despite all its uh, backwardness, quite clearly Spain was a capitalist uh, country. Uh, capitalism was the dominant mode of production and therefore it had a strong uh, working class that was concentrated in a number of uh, industrial uh, areas around Barcelona in Catalonia, in the Basque Country, in uh, the mining uh, areas in Asturias in the north, in Madrid, in the capital, 
and in some other big uh, cities. In reality, the bourgeoisie was unable to solve any of these uh, problems that Spanish uh, capitalism faced. Precisely because of its weakness, it had forged an alliance with all the classes coming from the old regime, with the church, with the landowners. The absentee, absentee landowners in the countryside had the money deposited in the banks or invested in industry. The, the church, as I said, was the main land uh, owner and was closely related to the ruling uh, class. And despite the fact that there had been a number of republican and bourgeois liberal uh, movements throughout the 90th, uh, 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, they never uh, fully managed to solve any of this. It was a clear case that the industrial working class, which numbered about number two million uh, workers at the beginning of the century, was the only class that could uh, take society forward. And from this uh, point of view, the, the Spanish working class was in a much better position than the Russian working class was in 1917. It was much bigger in uh, numbers and its social weight in society was much bigger than, uh, than uh, Russia, which was a much more backward society. <laughs> Spanish working class had developed uh, revolutionary traditions of struggle for many years, but the, the, but the theoretical, uh, th there was always a, a tradition in the Spanish, uh, particularly in the Spanish socialist organizations, that uh, there was never much attention paid to theory. And this, uh, and this, finally, the weakness of the leadership proved to be the, the main tragedy of the Spanish uh, Civil War. Like in, uh, like in many southern European, like in many other southern European countries, in Spain there were strong anarchist and anarcho-syndicalist uh, organizations amongst the workers. The main one being the CNT, the National Confederation of uh, Labour, which at that time organized uh, the best and most revolutionary uh, section of the working class in uh, Spain, and was, uh, was particularly strong in uh, Catalonia, where the, most, uh, the biggest, concent uh, biggest uh, concentration of uh, uh, industrial proletariat uh, was. was. There had been already in 1909 a big uh, uprising known as the Tragic uh, Week, La Semana Tragica, when the workers in Barcelona rose up against uh, mutinied, against the, them being drafted into the colonial war in uh, Morocco. <laughs> Particularly because at that time, Working class uh, youth were drafted into the army, while the bourgeois youth were paying their way out of the military uh, service. The Russian uh, Revolution of 1917 had a big impact in uh, Spain. There was a revolutionary general strike in 1917. Uh, what is not commonly known is that the Russian Revolution had an impact uh, on all the working class organizations in Spain, regardless of their political uh, tendency. The CNT, which was an anarcho-syndicalist uh, trade union uh, organization or revolutionary syndicalist organization, voted, voted to join the Third International and send a delegate to uh, Moscow for the founding Congress. And many of, the, many of the people who went on to form the Communist uh, Party came from uh, the CNT. And one of them, one of them was Andres uh, Nin. He was a leader of the CNT and was sent to, uh, and was sent to Moscow, where he remained working in the Red Trade Union uh, International. Later became a Trotskyist and uh, played an important role in the Spanish uh, Trotskyist movement. The, social, the official Socialist Party also voted to send uh, delegates to Moscow and, uh, and discuss the question of the Third International. The Socialist uh, youth officially went ahead of the mother party and directly joined the Communist International and set up the first uh, Communist Party in uh, Spain. But the Communist Party in Spain never fully developed into a mass uh, force. 
It was infected by all sorts of ultra-left uh, tendencies and was uh, completely destroyed by the third period uh, ultra-left madness of the Communist uh, International when they advocated splitting the, splitting the trade unions, described, described the CNT, which organized large sections of the Spanish workers as anarcho-fascists. And when, when the Republic uh, was proclaimed in April uh, 1931, the party, which was quite small, had only about 800 uh, members at that time because of these lunatic uh, policies. Came out, came out with a slogan for a Soviet uh, Republic and against the bourgeois Republic. There was also a Trotskyist organization in Spain at that uh, time, which was called the Communist uh, Left, which at, that, at the time of the proclamation of the Republic probably had uh, 300 uh, members. But it was the only organization that, at least on paper, in the program, understood the real character of the forthcoming uh, revolution. That is a revolution that had to solve the national democratic tasks that had been uh, left unsolved by the ruling class. But that could only be led by the working class. And therefore, and therefore the socialist tasks were completely linked with the national democratic uh, tasks of the revolution. The, the impact of the world economic recession of 1929 in Spain was uh, severe. At that time, there was a weak dictatorial uh, regime of uh, Primo de Rivera. The economic uh, crisis, the defeat of the colonial war in uh, Morocco, and the increasing uh, agitation in the countryside and in the cities brought down that uh, regime. April 14, 1931, there were council, uh, local, local municipal uh, elections where a coalition of Republican and Socialist uh, parties won a big majority. The masses, masses came out on the streets, the Republic was proclaimed and the King fled the country. There was enormous uh, enthusiasm on the part of the masses, the hopes were raised that finally their conditions were going to be fundamentally transformed. But the character of the government didn't allow for solving any of these problems, being a coalition between the Republican uh, bourgeois and the Socialist uh, Party. So although there were a number of uh, important uh, advances that the First Republic, uh, that the Republic introduced in the First gov Government introduced, particularly in the field of democratic rights, uh, education, and so on, they did not fundamentally solve the problems of the workers and the peasants who had voted for this uh, government. And in a whole, whole number of growing uh, incidents, the Republican uh, government started using uh, brutal repression against uh, workers' demonstrations, against peasants taking over the land. In one uh, infamous uh, incident in Casas Viejas in the south, the civil guards were sent and killed uh, dozens of uh, peasants in a struggle over land reform. And this created a, created a mood of disillusionment and, um, and tiredness amongst the masses that had hoped for this government to change their conditions. In the 1933 uh, elections, two years uh, into the first Republican government, the CNT advocated uh, abstention, and this connected with a widespread mood amongst the working class and, uh, and the peasant uh, masses and the Republican Socialist Coalition lost uh, the election, suffered a defeat. The more moderate right-wing Republicans came to power. In a coalition with the main uh, right-wing party of the Spanish uh, ruling class, the CEDA, and this, this was really a proto-fascist uh, organization. Following the model of uh, Germany and uh, Austria, there were attempts to mobilize uh, demonstrations of strength on the part of the petty bourgeois. Fascist demonstrations were taking place in different parts. But the situation in Europe had a powerful impact on the Spanish uh, working class. 
they could see how uh, the German proletariat had been uh, smashed and fascism had come to power with almost uh, no uh, battle being waged. They, they also witnessed the defeat in uh, Austria and they were not prepared to allow the same thing to happen in uh, Spain. The socialist uh, organizations, the Socialist Party, the Socialist Youth and the Socialist Trade Union, the UGT, underwent a period of sharp polarization. The left wing, the left wing in these organizations moved sharply to the left. And the main leader of this movement was Largo Caballero. There is, there is an interesting point about Largo Caballero. And that is that he had collaborated as an advisor on labor issues in the Primo de Rivera dictatorship. But under the force of uh, events and the pressure of the radicalization of the working class, he did move sharply to the left. To the point, to the point where he was advocating openly the dictatorship of the proletariat. And became known as the Spanish Lenin. There was, um, there was a strong pressure for unity of the working class in the face of the danger of fascism. And so they created what was uh, called the uh, workers' uh, alliances, the Alianzas Obreras. It was an attempt to unite all working class organizations against the common uh, enemy, unlike what had happened in uh, Germany. To a certain extent, to a certain extent, this was also facilitated by the weakness of the Communist uh, Party in Spain. But still, these workers' uh, alliances were not really Soviet-type organizations, but rather coordination committees uh, of the leadership of the different uh, organizations. But there was one place where the workers' alliances went uh, further and became much stronger, and that was Asturias. The CNT nationally rejected the workers' uh, alliances and said that these are political bodies who have nothing to do with uh, politics. But in Asturias, uh, they did join. The regional Asturias Federation of the CNT joined the workers' uh, alliances, which existed not only at the regional level, but in every town and city and mining uh, valley and, uh, and village. At this time, the socialist uh, youth that was part of the left of the socialist movement, dominated by the Largo Caballero left, had close to 100,000 uh, members and its own, uh, its own armed uh, militia. Largo Caballero made, made very radical speeches. You could see clearly a, a feedback process taking place between himself and the masses whereby he will speak very radical. This will connect with the audience and then uh, the masses will become further radicalized, pushing him to the left and uh, so on. And he, at one point, he announced that if the CEDA, the fascist party, was to enter the government directly, there will be uh, an armed insurrection, revolutionary insurrection all over Spain. The problem was the Largo Caballero spoke of armed uh, insurrection, of revolutionary uprising, but did not really prepare for it. For instance, the socialist uh, youth, which had an armed uh, militia, for a period in the run-up to the actual uprising, which took place in uh, October, basically withdrew from public uh, activity, from agitation in the neighborhoods and in the factories, and uh, concentrated only on the military, purely military preparations, which uh, were conducted more or less in secret of the insurrection. But the problem is that uh, revolutionary uprising is not uh, mainly a military affair, but a political uh, question. 
the socialist uh, trade union had a similar attitude while talking about uh, if the fascists come to power, the workers will stop them. The socialist trade union, the usual. At the same time, they were stopping, blocking or calling off uh, important uh, workers' strikes because they said that that distracted from the main uh, aim. <coughs> Probably, probably Largo Caballero thought that just with the threat of revolutionary uprising, the ruling class will not dare uh, allow the fascists into power. <coughs> so when, uh, when finally the fascists came to power in October 34, <coughs> The uprising uh, took place, but was badly prepared, it was uncoordinated. <coughs> it didn't have the participation of the CNT, which organized an uh, important section of the workers, with the exception of Asturias, where they did participate. This led to the defeat of the movement in uh, Catalonia, where the CNT was dominant. <coughs> And the uprising became confined to uh, the mining region of Asturias, which was, which was the only place where the workers' alliances had developed to a higher level and involved all working class uh, organizations together. So under, under the slogan of the UHP, the Union of Proletarian uh, Brothers, the Asturian uh, workers rose up and uh, organized a commune that lasted for two weeks. If you, if you read the history of the Asturian uh, commune, there's a very interesting uh, point which really summarizes in one uh, scene the whole tragedy of the Spanish uh, Revolution. In the mining uh, villages, the workers really took power They took over the local council and installed a revolutionary committee. But as soon as it was clear that the insurrection had been limited to Asturias, the situation was not very good and the Republican government was moving troops against uh, Asturias. The leaders, the leaders of the workers had been put in these uh, committees fled the cities, the, the, the towns. The workers uh, followed them, arrested them, and put them back in the town halls uh, to fulfill their role as uh, committees, revolutionary committees. In some cases, they put armed guards so that they wouldn't uh, flee again. You see, really, how, uh, and this is the whole uh, summary of the Spanish uh, Revolution. The workers once and again took power, put the leaders in uh, power. But the leaders once and again betrayed the, the workers and refused to do anything with that uh, power that had, they had uh, been given. The role of the CNT nationally was dreadful in all this uh, affair. Because they controlled the, the railway workers' union and didn't do anything to prevent the Republican, uh, the right wing uh, government, from sending uh, troops by, uh, by uh, railroad to smash the Asturian uh, comment. And these troops were coming from uh, Morocco, and they were led by Franco was, a, uh, was a, a military officer of the, of the army under the Republic. So the Asturian uh, commune was put down in uh, blood. Thousands were killed, tens of thousands were arrested. However, the October uprising was not a complete uh, defeat. It did, did, it did not smash the Spanish uh, working class. And it prevented the coming to power of uh, fascism in Spain. At the same time, that experience further radicalized the socialist youth and the socialist uh, left. They were thinking, trying to draw the conclusions from that uh, defeat. 
and the socialist youth, many of whose uh, leaders were in uh, jail, produced a pamphlet which was a balance sheet of October. And in this uh, document, they basically put forward the following uh, line. The second socialist international, social democratic international is dead. The third Stalinist international is also failed. And we need, and we need a fourth international, a revolutionary international. And they issued a call, they issued a call for the Bolshevization of the socialist uh, organizations. And they issued a call for the, and, and, they, and they advocated the, the purging, the expulsion of the compromising social democratic right wing from these organizations. Now we're talking here, we're talking here about an organization that had 100,000 uh, members, working class uh, youth, and an armed uh, militia. And then they made an appeal to the Spanish uh, Trotskyists that were organized in the communist uh, left. And the correspondence has been uh, published, you can uh, read it, it's really striking. And the correspondence was signed by uh, Santiago Carrillo, who at that time was the general secretary of the socialist uh, youth. And he said, basically said, you, the communist left, the Trotskyists, you are the best theoreticians of the Spanish uh, revolution. And he said, we invite you to come into the socialist uh, youth and help us in our struggle for the Bolshevization of the Socialist uh, Party and the Socialist Union. And the Spanish uh, Trotskyists, led by Andres uh, Nin, they replied the following. They basically said, you're very confused. What you are proposing is impossible. The Socialist Party cannot be Bolshevized. We're not going to mix our banner with this uh, project. And if you're really serious about being uh, Bolsheviks, you should abandon the socialist uh, organizations and join with us in the building of a Marxist uh, party outside. And I'm, uh, I'm not making this up. This is all in uh, writing. But, but the thing gets even uh, worse because Santiago Carrillo replied to this letter He said, let's assume for a moment that what you say is true. The Socialist Party cannot be Bolshevized. But if you come in with us and we wage this battle, if this is battle is uh, defeated, we will come out of these uh, organizations. And you will be much stronger because then you will have won the majority of the socialist youth and the best parts of the socialist uh, party. Trotsky was furious with the Spanish uh, Trotskyists and denounced them. Because just imagine uh, a better opportunity you cannot uh, imagine. The Spanish Trotskyists at this time probably had about 2,000 uh, members. If they had entered the socialist uh, youth, this will have meant the linking of the ideas of revolutionary Marxism with the mass organization of Spanish uh, working class youth. As a matter of fact, the Spanish uh, Trotskyists had already come under criticism of uh, Trotsky for a number of years. Trotsky was very critical of uh, Andres Nin when he first uh, went back when, when he went back to Spain in 1930 after being expelled from the Soviet uh, Union. Because he was spending a lot of time in uh, talks and discussions with people who were his uh, friends uh, in, in different political tendencies, ma mainly this guy Maurin. Instead of uh, what Trotsky was advocating, setting up a newspaper, an organization, and building the, the organization. And the Spanish Trotskyists also had a very insular uh, approach.
approach. They never involved themselves in the discussions that were taking place, the polemics that were taking place inside the international. And when, and when they did take position, they took position on the wrong uh, side of all, every single polemic. This was a crime of extreme uh, sectarianism and formalism. Because, because they went on, then they went on to form the, um, the, part, the, the workers' uh, Partido Obrero de Unificación Marxista, the Workers' Party of Marxist Unification, the PUM. Together with a very confused communist group in uh, Catalonia, the BOC, and the program of this new organization was extremely confused on all national and international uh, issues. It's a bit like, uh, I mean, at least if you, if you set up an independent revolutionary party, at least you should have a clear-cut anti-capitalist, uh, Bolshevik-Leninist uh, program. What's the point otherwise? It's a bit like what the Mandalites are doing now in, uh, in uh, Europe, where they set up separate uh, parties and uh, coalitions, but then they water down the program uh, so much that they, uh, it's difficult to recognize. Uh. Trotsky broke with the Spanish uh, Trotskyists at this uh, time. This was a real uh, tragedy because it meant that on the eve of the Spanish uh, Civil War, the forces of Trotskyism became reduced, the uh, forces of genuine Bolshevist, uh, Bolshevik Leninists became reduced to a really a very small uh, handful of people. And the socialist youth was finally, in a matter of a few months, one year, absorbed by the Stalinists giving the Stalinists for the first time a mass base in, in Spain, which they had not had before. In February, they, they obviously used all the authority of the Russian uh, Revolution, the, the power and strength of the Soviet Union, in order to attract this radicalized uh, youth. In February 1936, there were new uh, elections. And the Popular Front won a big majority. And uh, the Popular Front was, was a coalition of different uh, parties, included from the left Republicans, which are really liberal uh, bourgeois, the Socialist uh, Party, the Communist uh, Party, and, and also the POM. That is, they, they not only broke with uh, Trotsky on this question of uh, the tactics of entering the socialist youth, they also completely broke with the idea of an independent uh, working class uh, organization, entered into an alliance with a progressive. Uh, and Trotsky, Trotsky described this as an alliance with the shadow of the bourgeoisie. Because by this time it was clear that the decisive section of the Spanish ruling class had drawn one conclusion. That is, that, uh, the, only, that the regime was under threat and that the only way to stay in power was by smashing, physically smashing the workers' uh, organization. The overwhelming majority of workers and peasants had drawn a similar conclusion from the other side. which was expressed in Largo Caballero talking about the dictatorship of the proletariat. But then the workers' organizations made an alliance with a, with a section of the bourgeoisie, the left uh, Republicans, that did not represent any real force in society. And in the name of this alliance with someone who didn't uh, didn't bring any forces into the alliance, they stopped the revolutionary movement of the, of the workers. This time, when the Popular Front government was elected, the masses did not wait for the government to act, they took action into their hands. 
the program of the Popular Front talked about the freedom for all political uh, prisoners, and so the masses stormed the jails and liberated. Uh, The program of the Popular Front talked about land reform and the peasants took the land, occupied the land. But really the first half of, uh, in the first half of 1936 everybody knew that the uh, civil war was being prepared, that the fascist coup was being uh, prepared. Everybody could see. There were constant uh, provocations and counter provocations. The working class was in a state of uh, ferment with constant strikes, regional strikes, national strikes. And finally, finally on July uh, 17th, the uprising uh, started in uh, Morocco, the, the military coup. And on the 18th, the, start, the military coup started, uh, the fascist uprising started on the, on the 17th, led by Franco, and then on the 18th, spread to the mainland. And for 24 to 48 hours, the attitude of the Republican government was to uh, negotiate with the uh, coup. trying to appease them, calling on the masses uh, to remain calm, uh, refusing uh, to arm the workers who were demanding uh, arms. However, in the main industrial centers of the country, the workers defeated the fascist uprising on their own. This was the case particularly in uh, Barcelona, where the militants of the CNT, the anarchists and the PUM, they basically organized uh, barricades, militias, they armed themselves with whatever they could get hold of. They assaulted uh, gun shops and uh, got uh, rifles, uh, handguns. They, uh, they surrounded the military barracks. And in one, uh, and in one, and in one particularly heroic incident, they assaulted the Tarazanas barracks in uh, Barcelona by the seafront, and that was the end of the uprising, uh, the fascist uprising in Barcelona. This was, combined with, uh, this was combined with a mutiny of the sailors in the Navy that arrested the officers. And the situation that developed on the 19th of July was one where in large parts of the country the workers had taken power. They burned down the churches again. They set up committees everywhere, revolutionary committees. In the factories, there were workers' control uh, committees. The towns and villages were, taking over, were taken over by revolutionary committees. The, town, the official municipalities and town halls were abolished. They set up, they set up revolutionary uh, tribunals. Tribunales revolucionarios. Tribunales revolucionarios. They set up uh, public order patrols. And above all, they armed themselves and set up workers' militias controlled by the different working class uh, organizations, numbering tens of thousands of armed uh, workers. And in the case of uh, Catalonia, these bodies were coordinated in the regional uh, um, Central Committee of Anti-Fascist uh, Militias. The power of the Republican uh, government and the power of the regional Catalan uh, Republican government uh, disappeared to all uh, effects. There was, a, there was a situation of dual uh, power. Where the Republican government was still nominally in uh, power but had no uh, means to implement its uh, decisions. 
and the workers had real power. They controlled the economy. They controlled. They had a monopoly of uh, armed uh, force. But the leaders of the workers refused to uh, sweep away the remains of bourgeois power. And this uh, was clearly illustrated in a small incident that took place in uh, Barcelona, um, in which the Central Committee of Anti-Fascist Militias, dominated by the CNT anarchists, went to meet the regional uh, president, Companys. And Companys, who was a very astute uh, lawyer, who had also worked for the CNT as a lawyer earlier on, said to the anarchist uh, leaders, who arrived, arrived at this meeting fully armed and followed by an armed guard, he said, uh, he said, gentlemen, you have power. You have all the power. And you deserve it for your bravery. If you want, I will be a loyal servant of your power if you find some role for me to play. And the CNT leaders said, no, we're not, uh, we're anarchists, we're not interested in uh, power. You can keep uh, power. I mean, this is, this is the, the, the historical uh, demonstration, practical historical demonstration of the complete failure of anarchist uh, theory. Because what actually happened is that over the next uh, nine months, bourgeois power, which was uh, suspended in mid-air in uh, July 36, started to regain ground, while workers' power, which was absolute in July 36, started to recede. And the only, the only one reason for this was the refusal of the anarchist leaders to take power at that point. Nevertheless, nevertheless uh, what happened after 1936 was a real, a genuine revolution with um, full uh, liberation of uh, working class uh, energy initiative. <coughs> Incidents like what uh, Alan described where, where waiters in the bars and restaurants refused uh, tips. There was, a, there was a campaign to liberate women from prostitution run by the anarchist uh, trade unions. In many small uh, rural villages where peasants had taken control, money, money was abolished. We're talking here about uh, anarchists. Obviously, money was not really abolished. It was replaced by coupons issued by the local revolutionary committee. But if someone but if someone wanted to go from that village into to the capital, he needed a permit signed by the Revolutionary Committee. And my grandfather, who wasn't one of them, who wasn't political at all, he got a membership card of the UGT and a membership card of the CNT so that he could cross all checkpoints in Barcelona. In one of these uh, peasant villages, they uh, expelled the local uh, priest. They took over the church, and they turned it they turned it into a cultural center and workers' uh, cafe, where the land uh, laborers will go after a long day's uh, work just to see the sunset and uh, have a coffee. And in all uh, these little uh, incidents, you could see. How in reality the working class could run a new society. They were creating a new society from the ruins of the old society. Workers joined the, the workers' militias, the organizations and the committees in the hundreds of thousands, in the millions, became organized, politically aware. The, the poem, for instance, that for all its faults was still seen as the most radical uh, organization in the Spanish Revolution, went 
from uh, 8,000 to 50,000 members in just the space of uh, six to eight weeks. El Pou. They had an armed uh, militia of 10,000 uh, people. They had, they had a daily paper, a number of radio stations. And they took over main buildings in the Ramblas in Barcelona, which became the central uh, headquarters. But uh, the problem that was posed is that uh, was the, the fascist uprising had taken uh, hold in uh, some areas of the country, which represent about a third, and they needed to be defeated. And uh, the, the, the alternative that was posed was war or revolution. The Stalinists, Stalinists and the bourgeois liberals said that uh, winning the war was the first uh, aim and uh, therefore the revolution should be stopped. There should be no uh, revolution. While in one way or another, even, in, uh, even sometimes in an inconsistent uh, form, the PUM and the anarchists advocated that uh, only by revolutionary war you could win, uh, you could defeat the fascists. The anarchist leader Durruti uh, organized a militia from, uh, of workers from Barcelona and conducted precisely such a revolutionary war in uh, Aragon. The militias will arrive into a town or village that will take over, shot the most uh, well-known uh, fascists, and said to the peasants, this land is now yours. And uh, it is interesting to see how Aragon, where revolutionary war was conducted, was one of the last, remain, the last places to fall in fascist uh, hands right at the end of the war. They set up a regional, they set up a regional Aragon defense uh, committee linking up all the villages and uh, organizations. The peasants had something to defend. And this is what gave them strength to fight until the end. One of the most uh, striking examples of the failure of the two-stage policy of first winning the war and then waging the revolution. In relation to the colonial uh, question in Morocco, the nationalist uh, leader of the Moroccan uh, masses, uh, Abdel Krim, had a meeting with uh, representatives of the Central Committee of Anti-Fascist uh, Militias and offered to organize an uprising of the Moroccan uh, people against uh, Franco, which will have cut off uh, Franco from his main base of uh, support, if the Republic will grant uh, national uh, independence to Morocco. But the Republic refused. On, on what grounds? On the grounds that we need to get the support of the democracies in Europe, France and uh, Britain, democratic powers. And obviously if we start uh, declaring the independence of the colonies, uh, France and Britain, who are democratic uh, countries, democratic imperialist uh, countries, they will not be very happy. In the end, the fascist uh, countries, Italy and Germany, uh, intervened in the Spanish Civil War, giving uh, support, ammunition, uh, planes, and so on to the fascists. While the European democracies helped the Spanish Republic by declaring a non-intervention uh, policy and blocking any uh, help to the Spanish uh, Republic. The Soviet Union Stalinism was particularly insistent in this policy that there should be no revolution in uh, Spain. For two reasons. One is that they wanted to reach a deal with the European uh, bourgeoisie, with the European uh, democracies. 
but also they were very afraid of the e potential impact of revolutionary events in Spain inside the Soviet Union. One of the reasons why Stalinism had strengthened its hold in uh, the Soviet Union was precisely the defeat of the revolutions in other countries, in Germany, in China, and so on. And they feared that the Spanish Revolution would uh, spur the Russian workers into revolutionary activity again. So it is, not, it is for this reason that the Stalinist bureaucracy started the Moscow uh, purge trials precisely at this uh, time of the Spanish uh, Revolution. The role, the role of the Communist Party in the Spanish Revolution with the support of Soviet military aid and Soviet uh, advisors and, uh, and Stalinist agents was uh, criminal. They actually played the main counter-revolutionary role in Spain. And so, little by little, uh, bourgeois order was becoming uh, re-established. For instance, in 1936, uh, in, in September 36, the Central Committee of Anti-Fascist Militias in Catalonia was abolished. And the same, the same CNT leaders who had refused to take power then joined the Republican uh, government, which was abolishing uh, workers' uh, in Madrid and in Barcelona. And uh, the poem, which was the extreme left wing of the Spanish Revolution, also joined the Catalan uh, government. As a matter of fact, the, the poem leaders, while they had formally, in words, a correct uh, position, They were under the immense pressure of bourgeois public opinion to behave in a reasonable uh, way to help the war effort all together against fascism. And they had a purely diplomatic attitude towards the leaders of the CNT. While they were calling on the CNT leaders to take power and uh, so on, but they did not carry out faction work inside the CNT to connect with the rank and file and the left of the CNT in order to organize against the leadership. And uh, they paid a heavy price for that. It is interesting to see how the CNT, uh, this is an interesting point for today, because the CNT formally was an extremely democratic and horizontal uh, organization. And sometimes the anarchists uh, do mention that uh, tradition as an example. The CNT, which at one point had over a million uh, members, had no full-timers. All decisions had to be taken by a plenary uh, meeting of the union and then a plenary meeting of all the different uh, unions in one particular industry or in one particular region or nationally. And still, this organization became extremely bureaucratized. Its leaders joined the bourgeois government. They became known as the anarcho-ministers. And this created an enormous discontent amongst the rank and file of the CNT and its revolutionary left. Durruti had been uh, killed in the defense of uh, Madrid in uh, suspicious uh, circumstances. But he, be he, became, he became a symbol of the left, of the revolutionary wing of the CNT. There was a, there was a point in which the Republican uh, government decided to abolish the militias and create the popular army. under the argument that they had to be disciplined, centralized uh, leadership, uh, organized uh, army operations. And these are all correct uh, arguments. The point was not a technical point, it was a political point. The point is, who's gonna control this army? 
The militias were under the control of the working class organizations, while the popular army was under the control of the Republic Republican bourgeois government. Completely different thing. The disbanding of the poem uh, militias and, uh, and the incorporation of the militias in general into the Republican, uh, in, the pop in the popular army created a lot of uh, discontent. And a left wing was created inside the CNT, which was called the Friends of the Ruti. They had a newspaper called the Friend of the People, no, El Amigo del Pueblo. And they came very, very close to a Bolshevik position, where they said that the Revolutionary Defense Junta composed by the trade unions and representatives from the militia should take power away from the Republican uh, government and carry out a revolutionary policy at the front and at the rear. Incidentally, you probably heard about uh, the defense of Madrid. Madrid was completely, or almost completely besieged by fascist uh, troops. And at one point, the government fled to Valencia. Slogan developed amongst the Madrid uh, working class masses of uh, long live Madrid without a government. And even the, even the Stalinists had to implement revolutionary war policies in, in order to be able to defend uh, Madrid. They organized uh, revolutionary committees in every street, revolutionary vigilance committees in every street, in every block of uh, houses, flats. They showed uh, Eisenstein's uh, October film in the main uh, theaters in order to rouse the revolutionary fervor of the Madrid uh, workers. And uh, Madrid resisted for a very long time for that precise uh, reason. And it's also interesting to note that the Trotskyists, uh, although they were very, very small at this uh, point and divided in two or three different uh, organizations, they had a big influence over the Madrid organization of the poor. Finally, all these conflicts came to a head in uh, May 37 in Barcelona. where the regional uh, government staged a provocation against a symbol of workers' uh, control, which was the workers' control of the telephone exchange building, which if you go, if you go to Barcelona, you can still see it's in the same place in the northeast uh, corner of Plaza Catalunya. The unions uh, had taken over that building from uh, July uh, the 18th, and they uh, held uh, the telephone exchange ever since. So as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they could uh, listen in to the conversations of the government, they could uh, check the telegrams that were being sent, everything. It was a symbol of workers' control, power. <coughs> The regional police attempted to take it over from the workers, and that sparked an uprising in uh, Barcelona. The workers set up barricades throughout the city. There's a very interesting book about the May uh, events in, Bar in Barcelona, where you can see a graph of all the barricades, and they really control the key points in the city for six days. And the people in the barricades were ma mainly the CNT and the POM. But immediately the national leaders of the CNT, who were part of the government, uh, national government that was now in uh, Valencia, moved to uh, Barcelona and appealed to the anarchist workers to go back. Uh, <laughs> but still, still the workers were not convinced and they remained on the barricades for six days. And at this point, there was an alliance that was forged amongst different uh, left-wing uh, forces. 
the friends of Duruti, the Bolshevik uh, Leninists, the, the left wing of the Pome, they all more or less had a common uh, program. That is that the workers should take power. Starting in Barcelona, where they were in a position of strength, and then making an appeal to the workers in the rest of the country. As a matter of fact, the leaders of the poem played a dreadful role in those uh, days. Because while they were making an appeal to the leadership of the CNT to take uh, power, but they didn't take, they didn't take any concrete uh, measures in order to implement it. If, if, they had called, uh, if they had called a conference of delegates from all the barricades and the defense uh, committees and declared that the new government of Barcelona, the whole situation could have uh, changed. Finally, reluctantly and without the leadership, the workers uh, abandoned the barricades. And that was really the end of the Spanish uh, Revolution. The poem leaders were arrested. Andreas Nin was uh, kidnapped by Stalinist uh, agents, taken to Madrid and uh, killed, executed. The party was illegalized, its newspapers uh, seized and closed down. And after having used the services of the CNT for smashing the revolution in uh, Barcelona, the bourgeois government moved on against the CNT organizations. By the end of the year 1937, the situation in the Republican camp and the situation in the fascist camp was not much different. Working class, working class newspapers were illegal in the Republican uh, side. The CNT, CNT newspapers were subject to uh, censorship and te literally tens of thousands of militants from the CNT and the POM were in the jails. In Valencia, where the Stalinists were stronger, the government gave uh, the land back to the bourgeois, to the landowners. There was really nothing left for the workers and peasants to fight for. <laughs> Democracy and the Republic that they were supposed to be defending uh, didn't mean anything to anybody anymore. And therefore, therefore the defeat was inevitable. The end of the civil war uh, was accompanied with uh, massive uh, repression against uh, working class militants and organizations uh, all over Spain. Hundreds of thousands were jailed, deported or killed. And the black night of the Spanish dictatorship started. There's a number of other interesting points to be made about the Spanish uh, Civil War. For instance, about the role of Spanish and Basque, uh, Catalan and Basque nationalist uh, bourgeois, whereby they either supported openly the Franco side, Or, in some other cases, they made sure that factories and uh, industrial establishments were left intact for when Franco will come, they could still uh, continue running them. Another important point, say for instance in relation to Venezuela, is the experience of workers' uh, control and collectivization. Whereby, whereby workers had control over most factories and industries, but the ruling class still had control of the banks and, uh, and uh, the economy was still uh, capitalist. Even though workers' control was quite uh, prevalent uh, everywhere, this was never linked into a nationally uh, democratically planned economy. There's an excellent uh, article by Trotsky that summarizes the whole experience of the Spanish uh, Revolution, which I recommend everybody to read, which is, called, which is called The Class, the Party, and the Leadership, which a class, is a classic work that's been uh, recently misused by our friends in, uh, former friends in uh, Spain. But it explains, explains brilliantly 
How really the Spanish working class uh, did everything it could and more to take uh, power, to guarantee the victory of the revolution. But it was let down by its leadership. The leadership of the socialist uh, left. They used radical phraseology but didn't actually act on it. The leadership of the anarchists that uh, refused uh, politics and then joined bourgeois politics against the working class. And finally, the leadership of the PUM, which probably has more responsibility than anybody else, as they had a formally correct program, were regarded by the workers as the most left-wing uh, trend within the revolution, the most revolutionary wing, and finally vacillated at all the crucial uh, moments and also largely responsible for the, the defeat in Spain also uh, made inevitable the Second uh, World War in uh, Europe. And really the Spanish proletariat took uh, 25 to 30 years to recover from that bloody defeat. If you think about it, it took, took, uh, <clears throat> it took the industrial and economic development of uh, Spain in the 1960s and the creation of a whole new fresh working class recently arrived from the countryside in order to uh, seal the wounds of that defeat. <coughs> I would like to finish with a quote from, uh, from Buenaventura Durruti, the anarchist uh, leader. <coughs> he was always more a man of action than a theoretician. As a matter of fact, he was well known in Latin America for robbing uh, banks to finance the movement for the period. But during, uh, during the civil war became the symbol and the representative of uh, hundreds of thousands of anarchist uh, proletarian uh, revolutionary fighters. And his uh, funeral in uh, Barcelona was attended by tens of hundreds, probably tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of. And he, and he said the following. We have always, <coughs> sorry, we have always lived in misery. <coughs> and, we, and, we, and, we will, and we will be able to live with it for some time. But do not forget that the workers are the only ones who produce wealth. It is us, the workers, that make machines work in the industries, that uh, extract coal and, mi and mi minerals from the mines. We build the cities. Therefore, why should we not be able to rebuild and even in better conditions in order to replace what has been destroyed. <coughs> we are not afraid of ruins. We know that we will inherit nothing more than ruins. Because the bourgeoisie will attempt to destroy the world in its last phase of its history. But I repeat, we are not afraid of ruins because we carry a new world within our hearts. And, and, this, and this world is now growing in this precise instant. And I think that the memory of the Ruti, the legacy of the Ruti, we should be able to uh, claim it ourselves for the working class uh, movement.